So, I did a stupid thing. After nearly a decade, yes, that's right, it's been that long, I decided, hey, I'm gonna pick up Skyrim, special edition, and I'm gonna play. Hey, look, it has all the new content and improved graphics, and you have mod support. So, of course, the natural inclination I had was to try out all these cool mods to make a super powerful character. Like, for instance, I can play the Ebony Warrior, or I could be a Jedi with all kinds of cool force powers, that's pretty sweet. You could have cheat characters, I can have cheat companions, or hey, this would be even fun, I could be the daughter of Godzilla. Yes, you heard me. But then I started realizing that there is one thing that I wanted to do in Skyrim the entire time, the first time I played through this game, that I was never really able to do before, and I wanted to try and do it this time. Build a stealth character. Now, you might not know this if you've never played Skyrim before, but being a stealth character is impossible. It's, you can't do it. It's just not something that works correctly. Like, you know when you're playing an actual I stealth action the game, right there's a lot there. of options you have for, like, for instance, uh, hiding behind objects, and there's light meters, and all sorts of things to really heighten the tension and suspense of being a stealth character. Well, Skyrim, like a lot of open-world RPGs, just simply does not have that kind of functionality. It's mostly, you crouch down, you hope that you're in a dark enough spot where people can't see you, they probably do anyway, and eventually you get into open combat. It's not a great system, but it's the one that they put in place. Stealth is sort of the redheaded stepchild of open RPGs. It usually doesn't work nearly as well as magic or straight up melee combat or even range combat. But now I realize that there is a way that I could make a completely legitimate character with no mods, with no cheats, just by exploiting the fact that Skyrim is still kind of broken after all these years. And so, let me tell you a little bit about my new stealthy character, a Khajiit named Percy Jackson. That's right, I did it. I named him Percy Jackson. Sue me. Anyway, here's a little footage of Percy before he became super powerful, and he has to deal with a frost troll. Now, this is usually a bad thing as he climbs up to High Hrothgar. Uh, this is a common sticking point for a lot of people in the main campaign, and as you can see, uh, the magic uh, kind of sucks, uh, and uh, also my melee also uh, sucks. Now you can see when he starts hitting me that uh, it is not good, and he uh, he's taking me down quite a bit, so I have to down a bunch of health potions to stay in this. Uh, this this is uh, not easy to do. But don't worry, conflicts like this are going to be stupid easy after I start exploiting the game. Uh, mainly through a couple interesting things like uh, the Dawnstar chest, which has a bunch of magical items you can get for free, and the Fortify Restoration Potion Loop. Now, if you're not familiar with this kind of loop, uh, I recommend that you go and watch a video that the Spiffing Brit did, where he laid this all out and made a fork one of the most powerful weapons in the game. This is basically the same thing, so I'm not going to take you through the whole loop. The basic thing you need to understand is that by exploiting, uh, making the Fortify Restoration Potion over and over again, you can eventually cash it in and make some incredibly powerful potions of enchanting, which then basically makes the sky's the limit. You want uh, super powerful enchantments on your armor, your weapons, uh, you want to create a necklace like I did that gives you an insane percentage increase in potency to your alchemy and smithing skills. You can do it. Sky's the limit at that point, and there's really nothing that can stop you. This is actually the necklace that I had later on in the game, but I will tell you right now that this was probably a mistake and I had to try and make a, a nerfed version of this because when you get a percentage that's starting to come around 1 million percent, I start to get a little bit concerned. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I actually had to pull back <laughs> from this, but uh, who, who boy. So these were my much more reasonable pieces of alchemy equipment, uh, a ring and a necklace that both did only like 740,000% increase. But I only wore one at a time because I realized that would be a bad idea. 
Fun fact though, once you can increase your alchemy and crafting skills, etc. to such a large degree, it actually becomes incredibly easy to level up infinitely. I'll just show you that real quick right now. Obviously because I can improve my weapons and armor to a ridiculous amount, my smithing goes up to 100 with barely any effort, at which point I'll just make it legendary, it goes back to 15 so I can keep getting experience inside of smithing, and then I just go back and find any pieces, like, I don't know, uh, what do we got here? We got a leather helmet, okay, I'm just gonna make the leather helmet amazing, and I'm already at 26. We'll uh, do it again, and we're at 68. Uh, one more time for the folks in the back, and we're already at 100. Let's just go back and level that up a little bit. And as you can see, we get three levels out of that. And we'll just make that legendary again. Yeah, let's just go ahead and do that. Leather helmet, again, just takes one leather to do that. Uh, again, we'll just increase it, and again, we're at 68. One more, and... Uh, Okay, and uh, you see how this basically works, right? You rinse and repeat until you're at whatever level you want to be at. But the real key here is we want to become a great stealth character, which means improving our pickpocketing, our sneaking, and our lockpicking. Let me show you the equipment that I have for that. Uh, I, of course, named my equipment after the patron saint of stealth gaming, Sam Fisher. And uh, we have boots that increase my sneaking by about 10 million percent, uh, gloves that do the same for pickpocketing, and a hat that does the same for lockpicking. And so this is pretty great. Uh, you know, you can uh, make this pretty much as high as you'd like. I did just say that I was a little trepidatious about going over the million point, but I guess we're 10 million. We'll just say 10 million. That's, that's kind of like a break point. Okay, so we have our Fisher set equipped and we are in stealth mode. And let's see if they can see me at all. Okay, they are... Oh, there we go. I just walked right up uh, in front of him and I got a stealth kill with my two little iron daggers. That's great. Uh, okay, so you're gonna notice they're actually not attacking me. They're just attacking Lydia. Uh, because she doesn't have this amazing stealth equipment, and it sucks to be her. Just gonna do a little bit more improvement. Let's just make alchemy a legendary skill again, and, uh, I don't know, make any potion, really, just to fortify conjuration. And instantly at 100. Okay, great. Let's just go back and do that loop again. How many levels did I get this time? Two? Okay, well... Boy, it's a good thing I only had one of these equipped. <laughs> oh yeah! I can make a potion of paralysis that lasts for 31,000 seconds. That, that can't- Oh no, sorry! I have one that will last for 44,000 seconds now that I'm Alchemy 100. That, that's not broken. That's not broken at all. Uh, but- Oh hey! We reached level 100! Perfect. This is- This is fine! Now, I did put together some equipment that buffs out my health and magicka and stamina to a really unnecessary degree, which is great for straight-up combat, as you can see right here. Uh, just like, ooh, hey, Dryad, and uh, not even feeling it. Also, my sword will basically one-shot everything, because my crafting is insane. But enough of this foolishness. It is finally time to look at what happens when you go stealth through one of the many caverns in this game. Into this cave system we go, our stealth gear is on, and we are in sneak mode, and I have relieved Lydia of her duty so that nothing should be provoked by my approach if the nearly 10 million percent increase to my sneaking ability is to be believed. And here we have another frost troll. Oh, I remember your friend from back in the day. Now, I am going to be directly in front of the Frost Troll. Hello? Can you... Hello? How close can I get to the Frost Troll? Oh. 
I guess it really didn't matter. I still got a sneak bonus. I still did a sneak attack on him when I was nose to nose. Ooh, I can pick up some cave mushrooms. Let me just go ahead and do that. Oh, hey, there's another troll. Don't mind me. He is completely oblivious to the fact that I'm even here. Look, look, I'm just going to walk past him. I feel bad for him. I'm literally waving a sword in front of his face. Hello? Hello? I'm in the light. Yeah, not so tough now, huh? Oh, there, that's a good one, right there. Sneak bonus! Well now, normally, if I were to open this up, I'm sure something terrible would happen. Okay, oh, oh! Now the Falmer would normally just be descending upon me and I get into this major fight. But instead, they're just looking bemused at the chest. Wondering who this magical spirit could have been that just robbed them blind. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll move out of the way for you. Uh, yeah. So now they're just scratching. He literally is scratching his ass thinking about this. Can't figure out what happened. Um, okay. So now if I just go ahead and kill one of you... Yep, yeah, I, I just, I just killed him. Yep. And I'll kill you too. There we go. Oh, oh, the eye's opening a little bit. Okay. Um. Yeah, no. Nothing. Not, nothing at all. You have nothing to say to that. Okay. Well, <laughs> bye now. All right, the Falmore are just completely oblivious that I'm here. I'm just gonna take everything off this corpse you're looking at, if that's okay. Thank you. I'm just gonna move him around. Look, just, yep, move him right in front of you. Nope. Okay, let's test out lock picking. This is an adept chest, and I'm not gonna move the pick at all. And it's open. Okay, so obviously melee works really great, especially with daggers, because you get such a great stealth bonus. But what about the bow? Bows usually aren't that great in Skyrim, but I have my Rambo. Yes, I like puns. Which does an inordinate amount of damage. I know it says right here that it does 106 damage, but that is actually not right, because you're going to see down here my total damage is actually 106,121. Uh, the only reason it doesn't display that number up top is because the game never imagined you would need more than three numbers to display the damage you could do. Oh my goodness. Oh, and also I enchanted it so it absorbs, uh, what is that number? 4.6 million points of health, so there's that. So let's just line ourselves up a shot and see how this works out, and yep, basically what you thought was going to happen, right? I don't know why I made this. It's, that's completely unnecessary. I'm never going to use this. Now, surely using magic would alert enemies to my presence, right? Like, these Charis Hunters are definitely going to notice that I am electrifying them. Okay. Nothing? There's... Okay. What about if I tried a different spell? What if I tried to set you on fire? You're just staring at me with blank, stupid looks on your faces. While I increase my sneak and destruction capabilities. I don't imagine this is the way that Todd imagined I should be playing Skyrim. But I think we can all agree it is the best way to play Skyrim. And oh, my destruction is 31 now. Excellent. Witness me. Just witness me. <laughs> oh, this is just sad. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Something cool is going to happen. All right. Oh, spiders down. Yeah. Did you see that? Okay, what happened there? Okay, I gotta aim higher. Yeah, okay, good. Oh, oh, oh! 
You're right up in my face, huh? What is a spider? Nope. False alarm, everybody. Back to business. As usual, just crawling around our cave. There. Okay. You, again, this spider is so confused. Well, that's okay. The arachnophobe in me is avenged. I don't think the developers ever intended us to get this close to the Falmer to see their faces because, whoa, who? Time to do some lock picking. Put on my special hat, expert level chest, and it's open now. Perfect. So yes, by using all of the amazing exploits in this game, you can dominate at stealth to a stupid degree, and you don't need to use mods, you don't need to use console commands. In fact, I'm still gaining achievements for doing stuff in this game with this character, which is pretty incredible. Oh, what happened? Who is this? At the, general goods the time has come. <gasps> the ebony warrior himself I have done all that can be done. has graced us there with his left. presence. No quests to be undertaken, no villains to be slain. Well, no challenges to a face. challenge accepted. Ex what a terrific opportunity to try out our pickpocketing skill. Oh, zero percent to steal. Why is that? Oh, oh, you know why? I don't have my gloves on, do I? There, I didn't have my gloves equipped, or really anything else. Let's get those on for the boots. Now let's pickpocket. Ooh, there we go, we can steal that. And Never that. should have come here. Oh, you didn't ah. like that very much. Okay, okay. All right. Fair enough. But Where I'm... And he's lost me. The Ebony Warrior, the most legendary combatant in all of Skyrim, cannot Whoa. find me. And is dead in so one hit. So yeah, Percy has kind of broken the game, but that shouldn't stop him from having fun on more adventures in Skyrim. Like for instance, when he goes to the Thalmer Embassy, or when he goes to infiltrate the Thieves' Guild. Which he already did, as I can attest, but we were going to have to catch up with him on another video, because this one is already longer than I really intended it to be. But I hope you enjoyed yourself, everyone. Stay stealthy, Internet.